Hey guys, this is Lori with LM's Crafty Creations, and I am here to, first of all, welcome to my channel. I am glad to have you. Thank you for taking the time out to watch my videos. I do put a lot of time and work into my videos, and I just am so glad that you're here with me. I wanted to take some time to go through some mini album basics, like the questions that I get all the time. <laughs> so the same ones that are over and over, um, a lot of you guys have the same questions and there's not really a good, I go over everything in my videos, but maybe not everything in each video. So um, I thought that this would be a great place for you to just come and reference and find exactly what you're looking for. So the video is going to include the making of an album cover, the making of the binding system, the um, how to make a shaker card, how to make a swing tab, how to add magnets, what kind of magnets do I use, what kind of glue do I use, what kind of um, chipboard cutter do I have, all of those questions I want to answer in this video here and um, and I hope that it answers everything that you have and if it doesn't then leave me a comment let me know is there something else that is missing that you want to know how to do and if I know how to do that I will include it in this video so I expect there to be some edits along the way I'm making the video in segments so that I can um, put it together and maybe even change it later and add to it it's going to be a long video I'm going to warn you that ahead of time um, so what I have done in order to get you the answers that you need as quickly as possible is in the description box down below I have included all of the times as to which where everything started so if you just want to know how to make a swing tab look in that description box and you know make a swing tag swing tab um, it tells you exactly where in the video the timestamp where you can find that and just go to that timestamp watch that section and you're done so that's the purpose of this video and I hope it works for you guys so let's get started okay let's talk about basic supplies in mini album making um, of course we all know that we need a paper trimmer I use the Stampin' Up! paper trimmer um, I find it to be the most reliable. I don't have to change the blades as often, um, although I have heard some people complain about the newer blades that they are not as good. I don't know if that's true or not. I haven't had to buy any blades for a while. I do like that it has this handy storage compartment um, on this side, and actually I have my blades that say used, and I use those just if I need to... Um, I don't know, cut chipboard or something. Um, I use a used blade. So um, it also comes with a scoring blade, which I don't, I've never actually used that. But I like that it has this compartment and I can keep all of my, I only have one new blade left, so I need to get some more. Um, I can keep all of my new blades in here and I know where they are at all times because I am notorious for losing my blades. Okay, so this is a full um, 12, this is actually longer this is like 15 inches I only need up to 12 though it's all I ever use um, and it is a little beat up because it's well loved so there's that um, another thing that you need is a good scoreboard a lot of people use the Martha Stewart scoreboard I use the Stampin Up scoreboard only because I love this thing and for some reason you cannot buy these on their website I don't know why you should sell these separately Stampin Up because I would buy more of them because I'm always losing this one and I'm in a panic because I know that they don't sell these separately I'd have to buy a whole new board and as you can see my board is still decent and I've used this for a long time now uh, it did used to have a little thing up here where you could put your th um, tools or whatever but I always break those off um, and then it does have this where this fits in but it's so used that it barely even fits in there anymore and it um, falls out all the time. So anyway, but I love this scoreboard. Stampin' Up! That's where I bought mine. I do also have a, a Martha Stewart one as well. Um, what else? I use a Tim Holtz ruler. I bought 
like two at least um because i love them i have one that i take back and forth to work with me because i work on my albums at my lunch hour at work and then i have one that i keep at home just in case you know in the evenings when i get home if i need to do something i have a ruler here too so score tape is another thing you would need um, i use half inch three eighths of an inch and quarter of an inch every once in a while I might use an eighth of an inch but it's not really required and I do find the one inch tape or even the adhesive sheets the tape sheets to be very helpful as well um, I have a roll of one inch tape but I don't I use it sparingly because it's expensive so these I keep on hand though my favorite scissors in the world <clears throat> Tim Holtz scissors these come in three different sizes and I have them all. They come in a smaller version, this version, and then a large version. Really large. They're huge scissors. Um, but they're nice to have. And these are really good. Um, this size is really good for fussy cutting. That's what I use to fussy cut all my stuff. Um, what else? Bone folder. This is the one I use and it's beaten up on this side. I keep beating it up. I need to buy another one. These run you about 20 bucks, I think, on bonefolder.com, and I love it. Um, I'm hard on mine, but I forget which one this is, but it's the longer one because I like to really um, have something that I can get in there and burnish with or fold or whatever you want to say. And then I also have, where's my other one? I have an Ergo one. That I use sometimes, especially when I lose this one and can't find it, which does happen. I also have the the Martha Stewart ones that come with the um, punch boards. This is an Ergo one that I like to use as well. But I find I like the handle better. It's easier to hold on to. Um, then what else do I have in here? I always use a corner rounder. I have a really old one you've seen in my videos before. I mean, this one's from like the early 90s. Maybe not early 90s, maybe mid to late 90s. Anyway, I bought this at a scrapbook store um, that was here years and years ago, has long since closed. And then I also use these really frequently. This is the Scallop and Stub Punch by We Are Memory Keepers. And this is the corner rounder, quarter inch and half inch from We Are Memory Keepers. I use those frequently. Um, <coughs> excuse me. What else to make a mini album? I can't forget my all-time favorite glue. Art Glitter Glue is my favorite. Um, it dries clear. It holds metal embellishments. I use it to put my albums together. I use it to put my binding system together. I use it to mat, to put all my pages together. I just use it for everything. It's my favorite glue. So I use that. Um, a, whatchamacallit, blade. This is a We Are Memory Keepers blade. And mat comes in handy if you want to do like acetate pockets. I use this quite frequently. It's always good to have a nice mechanical pencil around. I use this to cut my, um, to tear my score tape with. It's called the Perfect Trim Ruler, and you can find it at, guess what, perfecttrimruler.com. Um, it's made to make it easier to cover your chipboard, your albums with, um, to do the corners. I don't use it for that. I just eyeball that, but I like this. Um, I also have... I use my place photo here stamp pretty frequently with my memento black. Um, this is this particular stamp is found um, at stamps by Judith. She's the one who makes this one and I love this one and I know there's a lot more out right now that are like really fancy um, but you know I'm buying scrapbook paper I don't have money to spend on stamps so I just use my old faithful. Um, Let's see. I also, of late, used to, I only used my Tim Holtz little inker dill and ink to distress all of my pages. Lately, I've gotten lazy, 
and I take these Versa Magic that I've had in my stash for forever. You can tell I've kind of beaten it up a little bit. And I do it directly on the page because I'm lazy. Just like this. And it gives me a distressed edge. And you probably can't see it on camera. But that's what I do. So, um, it's the lazy way out. It always helps if you have a, what is this, like a paper piercer? Is this a, yeah, this is by Stampin' Up. Um, they make all different brands. I use this when I'm doing my swing tabs and brads and things like that, and I'll show you that in my videos. But I use this frequently. What am I forgetting? Oh, let me show you that. I gotta move all this stuff out of the way to do that though. I want to show you my chipboard trimmer. I use a what's the darn thing called? Uh, Rota trim. That's what I have. Oh, this is heavy. Here it is. So I use a Rota trim. Um, at the top here, it goes to 12 inches at the top. And then I move this to, um, let me turn it around. So you can move this and put it wherever you need to and put your chipboard up against here and cut it. I also use it to cut um, like photo mats when I know I'm cutting a lot of the same size um, or even base pages too. I'll cut like all four base pages at one time if I'm doing an album on this thing because it's just like butter. Um, there is a million different trimmers out there that you can get. I bought mine at Walmart, um, but I've also heard that the doll trimmers are really good. And if my rotor trim ever dies on me, then that is probably what I will buy next. Um, geez, guys, I can't think of anything else. You always want to use a nice heavyweight cardstock. I do not use like Michaels or Hobby Lobby cardstock to make my albums. I use a hundred pound cardstock to make my albums because I want to know that my cardstock, that my albums are going to last for probably not forever, but at least many years. Okay. Um, so that's what I use hundred pound. Uh, what else? I can't think of anything else to tell you guys. So if I've missed something, then let me know. I'm just giving my craft room a quick glance. If I ever get brave enough to do a tour of it, I will um, eventually get that video up for you guys. It's a mess still after moving in. Um, there's so many other things. Oh, one other thing I would recommend is a um, a crocodile. Now, I don't, this is the one that I have that's, ooh, it's going to fall on me. And if you've seen these things, they're really heavy. I have the two versions. I have this one, the big crocodile, whatever you call this, big bite or something. And then I also have the small one. The small one I use more often. I only use this like every once in a while, but um, to punch holes and to set eyelets. So definitely have either this one or the smaller one. It's helpful. And that's all I can think of at this time. I know I'm forgetting something because I kind of did this on the fly and I didn't do a list, which I do a list for everything and I didn't do a list for this. So um, if you think of anything else, let me know and on to the next segment. Let's talk about making an album cover. Okay, my cover here is going to be eight and a half inches by eight inches. So I've already cut my pieces and my spine's two and a half by eight. I've cut all of my pieces and I always add um, tape around the perimeter. I use half inch tape. You can use whatever you want. I use a combination of tape and glue for my albums. And I find that that just keeps it more secure in my opinion. So um, I have these two pieces. Now, when making an album, to figure out what you want, how big of a paper you need to, to cut to surround your album, you need to measure your album and then add two inches. So my cover here is eight inches, so I'm going to add two inches so I cut my pieces 
of cardstock to, I cut two pieces at 10 by 12. Okay, and then I'm going to join these two pieces together. I've already went ahead and what I do is I take my ruler and I measure half an inch over and I draw a line right here so you can see my line and I join them together that way. So that way I, I know that they're even and I'm joining them together. Um, see this is the 10 inch right here and the 12 inches is across. I don't worry about the length this way unless um, unless it's a really large album and I'm going to have to join together three pieces of paper. Sometimes on landscape albums you have to do that. So let me, I need to zoom out once more. You're still kind of getting my computer, but that's okay, I don't care. Let's. Well, let's see how that works. Okay, sorry for that. Now, let's see. So what I would do, so I, I've joined my two pieces together. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to take my ruler and my pencil and I'm going to measure um, an inch on this side. and draw a line. And then I'm going to do the same on the bottom. And I'm going to do this all the way across. Good enough. So I have an inch this way and an inch this way marked off. So where these two lines intersect, which is right here, can you see that right there? That's where I'm going to line up my chipboard, my first chipboard piece. Now before I stick it down, I'm going to line it here. And then I'm going to guesstimate about a quarter to three eighths of an inch gap right here between my two chipboard pieces. And this way I want to tell where my spine is going to lay and where that joined piece of cardstock is going to lay because you want to make sure that you get it correct. So this one is going to lay just right here along the binding and I think that's going to be fine. Yeah, so you want to make sure that this line isn't like right on the edge here because if you do, can you see that? I can't tell if you can see. So my line is here. I'm going to make that darker for you. So with everything lined up, it's going to be about there, which is fine. It's going to all fold correctly. But if it were like on the edge like this, that's not going to work. Instead of using your guides here, I would move my spine to the middle like this to make sure my crease is in the middle and then do my other pieces like so. Does that uh, make sense for you guys? So you just have to place it down and figure out where everything's going to go and in this case I do have enough um, cardstock so it's going to work out fine for me. So let's get started here. I've already put my tape down and so I'm going to remove the tape backing from all of this. And I'm going to add my glue. And I just kind of haphazard, you know, squiggle it everywhere just like I normally do and I don't put it on the edges I just put it in the middle like that and now I'm gonna line it up with my two marks that I, pencil marks that I made and make sure everything's even and I'm gonna stick it down just like that 
super easy. Then I'm going to take my bone folder and I'm going to go over it and make sure sometimes with the glue it can show through, you know, where you put the glue. So I just make sure and go over with my bone folder and I don't seem to have that issue. So it looks nice and clean on that side. Now to get my gusset here, I'm going to use quarter of an inch score tape. You can also use three eighths of an inch. If I'm going to do, this is a large album, but it's not very thick and heavy. If I'm going to do a thick, heavy, bulky album, I'm going to use three eighths of an inch and give, you know, give it just a little bit of extra room. So I'm going to bump this up right against the chipboard. And this is my guideline for my gusset. So I'm going to take my spine and again, I'm going to place it here and make sure it lines up and that my two um, creases line up correctly still. You can never check that enough because I have made albums where I screwed up on that and it's, it can be fixed but it is a pain, so best to just avoid it entirely. It, if you do happen to do that, I have fixed it before by lots of glue for one along the seam and um, also by covering my spine with either fabric or like um, y'all know I usually, um, if you've watched my videos, you know that I like to use the doodlebug velvety kind of um, what do they call that? It's like, um, they, uh, totally escapes me right now, but it's like a velvety or even the die cuts with the view makes a denim paper that's wonderful to work with too. That would also protect your spine if you were to, to mess up like that. So it can be fixed, but if you can just avoid the problems in the first place, that's the best. Okay, so now I just lay down my tape on the other side for my other gusset. And I'm going to and take off my tape backing here. And I'm going to stick this one down. The process for me, I'm going to add my glue, hasn't really changed much as far as how I make my albums. There's just a little tweaks here and there. Um, I didn't used to use glue at all, and now I do. Um, for one, to save on score tape because it is expensive, and two, just because I find that using a combination of glue and tape just makes it sturdier. Okay, so I've lined this piece up with my pencil mark I made here down at the bottom, and everything's lining up beautifully. Beautiful. Okay. Now, now that we have this done, we have a little bit of excess on here that we don't need. I usually just trim it off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure an inch, just like I did on the other side, and give it a mark. And I'm just going to cut that excess off. It's just, it's less tape, less glue that you have to mess with just to glue that one piece down, that extra cardstock. So why even have it there? Now, at this point, I'm going to add my tape around. I'm going to go ahead and stop my glue up. So I'm going to remove my tape backing from the gussets, and I'm going to add tape. I use quarter of an inch tape all around the perimeter of the chipboard and half inch tape all around the perimeter of the outside. So I'm going to do that now. <clears throat> Excuse me. Quarter of an inch tape. So I'm going to have to twirl it all around here for a minute for you guys. So I get my tape on it. And I, I guess you could do this ahead of time. I don't because I like putting tape right here. And you could do that ahead if you thought that way, but sometimes I don't. Sometimes I get so lost in what I am used to doing that the simple things that make sense to change just don't even occur to me. Okay, so then I'm going to do 
my half inch tape and I'm going to use my handy dandy little perfect trim ruler that is not actually I just use it to cut my tape so and then I'm going to put it around the edge of all of here all of the edges I originally purchased the perfect trim ruler to help with my um, it's supposed to be used to help you with your edges on your albums but I either am challenged or something I don't know I never could I seem to eyeball it better than I do trying to measure it out so um, but instead I found a different use for it so it's okay I don't think they're terribly expensive either okay last piece let's see if I can do this without having to switch it around certainly is better if you move it every which way okay now my tape's been added so I'm just gonna give her a quick burnish and my table's gonna shake because or the camera's gonna shake because it's on top of my table so sorry okay and now I'm gonna miter the corners on the edges so all I do like I said I guesstimate I eyeball it and leave about an eighth of an inch gap all the way well on each corner you could leave more just more you're gonna have to tuck in later but I find that eighth of an inch works for me okay so now we're gonna do the fun part we're gonna do the covering so I lift this up and push it down to fold that paper over I'm gonna do the same thing on this side just folding it over here and I do the top first I do the top and bottom first so I am gonna remove the tape from the sides because it will glue down to the sides just a bit I'm gonna remove this tape backing and this one and I do one at a time one side at a time so I'm gonna leave the rest and I add glue so I'm gonna start over here in the corner and this is what I do I just squiggle it all along the edge and now I'm gonna take my hands and I'm gonna gently fold it over and stick it down this is how I make all of my albums used to do all kinds of burnishing and you know whatever you want to call it and just this is easier your hands work just as fine and then I go over it with my little tool my bone folder to make sure that the tape gets really stuck down well okay so first edge is done that's it so again I'm just gonna kind of bend it again I'm gonna remove the tape backing from the top okay my little coffee trash can is not big enough for those huge pieces of the tape and then I'm going to add my glue and fold it over with the art glitter glue which is the glue that I'm using you have to work fairly quickly because it will dry on you and mine buckled up just a tiny bit but I'm just going to take my bone folder and kind of work that out that's just right where that crease is and I'm okay with that okay now I have this so now we gotta do the edges now some people have asked me about Tyvek 
do I use Tyvek? Well, obviously, not all the time, no. This time I'm just bending the paper again, just like I did before. Um, I do not use Tyvek. I'm going to do this on both sides. Um, only when I have a really heavy spine, occasionally I will use it. But I don't have any problems with my spine cracking. You know, I've had several of my albums for quite a, a while, and I just don't have any issues with that, so I, I don't add it. Um, so what I'm doing here, I'm taking my bone folder, and I'm lifting up on my chipboard, which is very important. You want to lift up on it, because if you go in here and you start going in with your bone folder like this, it's going to tear. You don't want that. So just work it into the cracks. Get it to stick down to that tape that's in there. And what are we doing? The sides. So now I'm going to take my bone holder. I use this end of mine, and mine's a little bit beat up. But um, maybe it's because I do this. And I tuck this piece in with my bone folder. And I'm going to do that on both sides. And just kind of take it. See if I can get this, and I tuck it in. Can you see that? Tucked in. Like that. I did it on both sides. And then I'm going to remove the tape backing, add my glue. And this time I am going to take my bone folder and get it right up against there and then fold it. Okay, and now we have nice corners. Perfect corners. Those came out perfectly. Let's see if these will come out. You know, it, not every corner comes out perfect. Again, I'm going to fold it in. Taking it, and I'm kind of just getting in there, folding it in. <laughs> Remove the tape backing. Add glue. And I come back in here. And just let my bone folder help me to fold it over. And look at that. Pretty good, huh? I think they're pretty good corners. They don't always turn out like that, by the way. So if you have a little overhang here, I just take my bone folder and just bang it a bit. But that one, I think they look great. So there is your album cover. And now I've already prepared the gussets here so I can slowly go in and fold it. And there we go. Voila, album cover. So like I said, if you, the process is the same no matter what size album you have. So you always do whatever the, what is that, the width, whatever the width is and two inches more than that. Um, and then the length, you just put lay out your chipboard pieces, and if it's not going to fit, then you're going to need to cut another piece. As long as you want at least an inch of cardstock all the way around to be able to wrap your album in, and you really don't need any more than that. Um, and that's it. There you go. I hope that helps. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, let's talk about magnets. So, let me move this out of the way. What I do for my magnets is super easy. So, I use score tape and then I use these. My one million magnets. Whoa, these are very dangerous. Go together without snapping me. So I've gotten my fingers snapped a time or two between these. This is something of 200 magnets. So I buy my magnets on eBay. 
I use the neodymium magnets and they are like 1 32nd of an inch thick. So let me take one of these off and they look like this. Look how thin that is. Super duper thin. Um, oh dang. And see, look there. I broke it. So there's that. And the pieces are sharp. I'm going to throw them in this metal coffee can. That's going to be great. And so if you let it click too hard, I mean, they will shatter. But they are super strong. It's sometimes hard to get one off of here. So I'm going to use two of, actually four of them for this project. So I've got all four laid out here, kind of spread out so they don't knock together. So let's see. What I'm doing here, I hope you can see this. So I have these flaps here that I need to close. And so to do this, I'm going to put a magnet on each part. Now, the easiest way, because I want a magnet here and a magnet here, but I don't want them to overlap this because this is going to have magnets on it and they're going to connect to here in the middle. So the, the best thing to do first is to put a magnet on this top piece on the back on, in each corner. So let me show you what I do. So I'm going to put, let's see, one in this corner and then one in, whoops, sticking to my computer, this corner. So I take my score tape and quarter inch and I stick tape on it just like that and then I tear it off. And then I'm going to take this and get the tape backing off. And I'm going to stick it far in enough to where when I mat this, the matting will cover it. Because if you go all the way to the edge, then you're, um, you're in trouble. It's not your matting, your decorative paper is not going to cover that. You want your magnet to be completely covered. I'm going to do the same for the other side. I got my tape on it. I'm just going to come in a little bit here and stick it down. Now I'm going to take my other two magnets and I'm going to stick them on the top of these like so to make sure that they're the right direction. Now I'm going to carefully pick this up and I'm going to make sure that I put tape right there on top. I'm going to stick it back down. Same for this. Okay, so there's my magnets. I'm going to take the tape backing off of these two now. And then I'm going to take this piece, make sure it's nice and closed, and I'm going to place it where I want it. I'm going to gently lay it down. The score tape won't stick just yet. Make sure it's even in the square. and then I'm going to press it down. Okay, so when I take this away, my two magnets are where they're supposed to be. So, and then I'm going to take my score tape and I'm going to put score tape over each magnet. And this just helps it hold just a little bit better. Okay, so then I'll put like a cut apart or decorative paper on this side and then I'll cover it with decorative paper on this side as well. These flaps will be covered with decorative paper and when you know you, you open the flaps, voila, close, 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 closure and it will stay. Now my paper will lay flat eventually, it's just not laying flat right now. So there you go. There's um, how I do my magnets. Same instance would be like if I wanted to add a flap to this right here, I would take a magnet and I would take my tape and I would stick one down right here. I would stick a magnet on top of it and then put tape on top and then press it down and lift it up and then put score tape over each magnet. 
and that's it. That's what I do for all of my magnets. And so um, I hope that that answers questions regarding magnets. I will put a link down below. It's hard to put eBay links um, because they tend to expire, obviously. So I will at least put the description down below um, as to what to search for in eBay to find these magnets. They're really strong and they're what I use for all of my albums. I also use the um, basic gray magnets, but given the amount that I go through, it's just not cost effective for me. So that is why I buy like 200 at a time. And it, it's it's like 50, some $45 or so to buy that many at a time. Um, but it is worth it. So thanks for watching. All right, let's talk about swing tabs. I've had questions about swing tabs and I wanna show you how to do them. So I have made this random piece out of, and I actually just, it's really random. <laughs> I just folded together a piece of cardstock and slapped some one-sided pattern paper piece on top. So let's talk about what I use for swing tabs. So I use this Tim Holtz die most of the time. This is the tiny tabs and tags die, I believe. And this tag right here is this right here and it is my favorite swing tab to use it's just the perfect size some of these get too large and um, I really like small things I also like using like the graphic 45 has tags in their collection that has the holes that I like to use for swing tabs um, so this is a bigs die made by Sizzix again Tim Holtz um, that one's my favorite and I usually go through and I just cut a bunch of these at once and I keep them in a little container in my craft room. Now to attach these here, I use these. These I believe are also Tim Holtz. I bought these at Hobby Lobby and I just keep them on hand. It's just every color, you know, bronzy, generic kind of color you could want of Brad's. I'm gonna use this little gunmetal kind of color right here today. So um, this, if you, you could either use your 40% off coupon at Hobby Lobby for this, or you could, um, they run these on sale. There's stuff every once in a while. So there's that. And then I will show you these. I do have these, they call them turn mounts and they're for picture frames. So I have these and I have a love hate relationship with them. Is the box even gonna open for me today? And I have found that if you're gonna use one of these, like it has sharp edges on the end, at least the ones that I bought do. These, so again, they're for picture frames for holding your picture in, and it's a flat edge. I have to turn it over on the sharp part to get it to work. Um, otherwise, the flat edge won't go over the paper to keep it closed. And I just use a brad there to keep that closed. Does that make sense? That's my favorite word today, phrase. Does that make sense? Okay, so I'm gonna take another ugly piece of paper. And so I have this, so what I do is I cover it in paper. So I glue, I'm gonna glue it down. And this is very thin paper, so it's not gonna look great. The thicker the paper, the better. So I'm gonna glue that down here. I'm just going to cut it out. And this is how I just decorate it. Whatever pattern paper I'm using, whatever collection, I just make it match the collection. And since this was, and then now I'm just going to cut it out. Normally I would probably set it on to, you know, and let it dry for a while, but for the sake of the video, I didn't do that. So we are just going to do it on the fly. Okay, so then I'm left with this and my little holes covered up. So I take my, where's my paper piercer? Did I put it up where it goes for a change? 
I did. Okay, so I'm going to take my little paper piercer. I'm just going to stick this in to make that hole again. So here is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take, so I've covered my two flaps only on the inside, so, I mean on the outside. You only want the outside flaps covered if you're going to do a swing tab and not the inside yet because we're going to punch through it. So let me show you. You got to figure out where you want this. So what I do, say we're going to do it right here in the middle, is I put it right at the edge here because you want to make sure it clears everything and I'll show you what I mean. So here, and I'm going to take my pencil, you know, if you wanted to, you could use your ruler, you could measure the middle, and that's where you could place your mark. I'm just going to mark my hole right there, and that's where I'm going to punch my hole. You could either do that with a crocodile, um, anything you want. I'm just going to take my paper piercer and punch this hole all the way through the paper. So see, there we go. That's it. I'm going to put my swing, actually I'm going to put my brad in here. That's what's going to hold our swing tab down. Do I need to zoom in some more? It's a little late for that, isn't it? That's as far as we'll go. So, um, so then I'm just going to take this and stick it in the hole, flip it over, and do my prongs. This is why my bone folder is all messed up, is because I use it to do these prongs and make sure there. Now what I do is I put tape over this. So I'll take my like quarter inch tape and I'll do that. And then this and then this and voila swing tab. So n the reason why you put it this way is because it'll clear the flap entirely. You want to make sure that it's not too far this way because if it is, then it won't keep the flap closed. But this is right there and that is just perfect. So there you go. That is how I do a swing tab. And you can use anything you want. I like to use the chipboard because it gives it just a little bit more weight. So I hope that that helps you um, figure out. And um, from here, you can just use your imagination. All right, thanks for watching. Hello, let's talk about policy envelope closures. This, I've created a little makeshift envelope, very makeshift, um, just for the purpose of showing you how to do this. And what I am doing is, so again, this is just an envelope style closure, and we're going to put um, the little string policy envelope closure on it. So to do that, what I typically do is take two circles. In this case I've punched out four and I'm just going to join them together to make them thicker. Um, you can use chipboard. I would I would suggest using not heavyweight chipboard for sure. Um, lightweight chipboard I guess would be best probably. But I find that doubling the cardstock works good and I just punch these out with my one inch circle punch is all I did. That's what I usually use. You can also use acetate if you wanted your um, circles clear. If you have like one of those heavy duty punches that will punch it, that'll work too. So I'm going to take my circles and you can cover them with pattern paper but for the sake of the video I am not. Um, the first thing we need to do is figure out where we want it. So I think about right here will work for me. So for this one, I'm going to take my crocodile, if I were ready with it, which I'm not. And I'm going to just guess where the middle is. If I were really doing this, I probably would actually do it right. And I am going to punch where I want it, just like that, okay? So 
now this is the one I'm going to attach my string to the other one so this one I'm just going to go ahead and use my eyelets and I'm going to secure it down so I'm just going to use these black ones here and I'm going to go ahead and see my crocodile is set on the wrong thing because I was using the small eyelet punch before Cooperate with me, dude. Okay, here we go. Is that right? Yes. Now, I'm going to go in and I'm going to set my eyelet. Okay? So that is not in the center at all, but you get the idea. This is what we're going to wrap the string around. So now, we're going to take this one. I'm going to go ahead and punch my hole as much in the middle as I can because I'm not going to measure it like so. And then I'm going to do, I'm going to mark the hole here and go ahead and punch that as well. Oh, my crocodile, my crocodile, my crocodile is not long enough. Let's see. Then I'm just going to punch it right here and see if that'll work. Will it work? It's going to overhang it a little bit. So I should have planned better, but what I'm going to do instead is modify my circle size. But what you would do is just use either a different hole puncher. I should have just got out my big one, but I don't want to. So I'm just going to make it smaller instead. So, now I'm going to take my string, I'm just using baker's twine and I just cut a decent length and I'm going to put it through the hole, both holes here, it's fraying. And I'm going to tape it on this side. Okay. So now it's secured. Now I'm going to take my eyelet. And I'm going to stick it in the hole with the string sticking out. So you can see where the string is sticking out. And I'm going to stick this in the hole here. And then I'm going to set that. Now make sure where you put your string is where you want it. In this instance, I guess I could have not put it through that hole, right? So I could only have it through that one. I think that'll look better, don't you? So instead, I've got my string here coming out of this hole. I'm going to put my eyelet here. Not easy. So that way it's behind there, it looks better. And then I'm going to set it. So really the eyelet is what keeps it into place. I just like the tape just for a little something extra. And so that's it. Now I have my policy envelope closure with my makeshift size circles that is a fail. But now you can just string it around. But you get the idea. And this is way too long of a string. So I usually, if I'm using baker's twine, I tie it off because it frays and that gets on my nerves. And here we go. And you can wrap it around however you like. I think I did mine one. There we go. There we go. So there is my really sad looking policy <laughs> envelope closure, but you get the idea. Um, 
usually I would cover this. I would do like two circles in cardstock and maybe another circle in pattern paper or one in cardstock and one in pattern paper either way um, to make sure it looks nice. So that's how I normally do it. But you just use your eyelets and set your string inside there. Give it some tape. You can cover this all with paper now. So this is why you wait. So that way, you know, now your eyelet can be covered with paper. Um, so just decorate the outside, do your closure, and then do um, the inside. So that's it. I hope that helps you. Again, like I said, you can use, I've used acetate to do these before, or um, I guess that's it. Acetate or chipboard is all I've ever used, or cardstock. So, and all of them hold up beautifully. So, I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.